Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. So I'm coming to you guys with a video on what I really think about the Harley Davidson Pan America that was just announced last week. Now I did a video on this where I was rather critical of the actual unveil event uh, in and of itself. And as I was editing that video, I almost didn't publish it because all the reviews started coming in on the bike and everybody loved it. And overall people seemed to really receive the message well, but I gotta say, I decided to publish that video because I stand by what I said, I meant what I said, and I was reading through earlier today, Harley Davidson on their own site here for their investor site, for their very first paragraph says, today we continue to define motorcycle culture and lifestyle, evoking soul stirring emotion reflected in every product and experience we deliver. And that's exactly what I had was a soul stirring experience. I watched that unveil and I just cannot believe how much time they spent talking about the history of Harley and not how much time they spent talking about this incredible new motorcycle. The first thing I'm gonna mention is again, I have no problem with Jason Momoa. The introduction of the bike, if you wanna use a celebrity to kind of roll that thing out, go for it, no problem. But the rest of the content, in my opinion, should have been all about specs. And that's what we're gonna talk about today because I think it's incredibly impressive. I think Harley should have really come out swinging and saying, not only did Harley Davidson come out with a bike that was revolutionary for Harley Davidson in its inner circles, but it also created an ATV bike that can go toe to toe, if not beat the competition in specification. So as I look on Harley's media site, as I'm making this video today, they have a section on the Revolution Max 1250 engine, what it's all about, a bunch of images, and those are things that I think were really lacking in that presentation was, information on this Revolution Max. What is powering that Pan America? You've got a 1250cc uh, motor. It's got 150 horsepower, peak torque at 94 foot pounds, and a peak RPM of 9,500 uh, RPM for a Harley Davidson, which is just, poof. I mean, that's high for any bike, but a Harley Davidson, that's that's pretty incredible. The fact that Harley Davidson has a, a, a motor that the frame is basically attached to and that motor then becomes a part of the frame. That's huge for Harley Davidson. Liquid cooling, that was something they didn't even mention, I don't think at all in their, their release. And I think they're shying away from that because of the diehard Harley Davidson guides that are going to uh, totally flip out about liquid cooling, but it's a massive thing. And what's to come out of this motor, what I hope is to come out of this motor is a Revolution Max touring bike that like a performance bagger, that would be incredible. And then just running through some of the other specs that if you watched that presentation, you had to go dig for these specs. And I think that was a big mistake, mainly because again, the specs are incredible. You talk about seat height with the optional suspension with the uh, uh, automatic lowering suspension, 30.4 inches compared to say a Multistrada, which is like 33 inches. You're three inches lower to the ground. A lot of people complain about ADV bikes being too tall, not being able to flat foot them and just a general discomfort which is going to be huge for Harley people who are used to being able to flat fit uh, bikes, but also for smaller guys that are buying ADV bikes that don't like that feeling. So Harley actually had a slam dunk with that automatic suspension lowering uh, to get you in a position where you can flat foot these uh, ADV bikes. It's a huge deal. Uh, one thing I also would like to know and have a little more of like a presentation of is why they chose chain drive over shaft drive. I think a lot of people would argue chains better uh, but I think that a lot of Harley Davidson riders, if you're trying to appeal to them, aren't going to want to spend a lot of time maintaining a chain because they're used to belt drive. So that shaft drive maybe would have been a better option. And then something else that I also think should have been presented a little bit more, a spec that I think is incredible is the stressed member, uh, high strength, low alloy steel trellis frame, as they call it, stamped cast, forged junctions, MIG welded, aluminum forged mid structure. This is all stuff that's not Harley Davidson speak. So I think it's something they need to spend time celebrating the fact that this is even stuff that they're talking about. Uh, it just is, it's impressive. One piece uh, cast aluminum uh, swing arm and all of that leads into the weight of this bike. In running order, this Pan America is going to weigh 559 pounds. If you think about Harley Davidson producing a bike this large at 559 pounds, you would have never believed it. I, I think a lot of people were assuming this bike was gonna come in way too heavy and it actually comes in swinging right with the rest of the bikes that are in this segment. Uh, that's something nobody was really expecting uh, from Harley Davidson's. And what's most exciting to me about that is this Revolution Max motor is going to make its way into other models. Uh, obviously, uh, we already know it's coming, but 
I am already thinking about 150 horsepower, 559 pound performance bagger and how much that bike would just rip. I am hoping that this is going to drive them into a Revolution Max 1250 touring bike. It's got to be coming, but I want to see the same thing. Stressed member, uh, aluminum frame, and just really redefine what a touring bike uh, is in, in the market for Harley Davidson, at least. That is kind of all the specs that I'm going to talk about, about the, with this bike. But from a visual standpoint, it is just a, a killer. I didn't love the headlight look at first. When they first released it, I wasn't sold on it. Uh, I have since grown to appreciate it um, in video form. And that kind of tells me that once I see it in person, that it'll have officially grown on me at that point. Uh, so I've got to say, it is a beautiful motorcycle. The specs are right where they need to be. As long as performance and durability is there, which it looks good. Again, I haven't ridden the bike. Nobody's really ridden the bike from a position of being able to critique that. Um, I would love Harley Davidson. Give me a call. I can shoot up to your testing facility here and uh, go rip around on this bike. I would love to do that. I tell you that everything I say on this channel is with great intentions. I think that um, if you can't be critical of something that you love, then you really don't care that much. I will never shy away on this channel of sharing uh, my opinions, even if it's not the popular opinion, uh, because I'm just not here to say what people want to hear. I'm here to say uh, what I mean. And that's why I put the video out that I put out last week. I just wanted to say, I, I do love the bike. I think the bike is awesome. Um, I just wanted to see Harley Davidson capture people and kind of shout it in their face about how awesome this bike was and not so much the Harley Davidson has an awesome history messaging because uh, your core customer already gets that. The people that you're trying to reach out to, to sell this bike to probably don't care so much about all that rich American history and Harley Davidson culture and all that stuff. Uh, an ADV buyer, I think really just wants to buy the best spec ADV bike and uh, I think you kind of have to spend time, if you have their attention, selling in that brief moment. Um, assuming people are going to go dig for specs down the road and, and hope that they discover that, you know, your bike isn't a joke. Um, I think there's a lot of people out there that might just look at this and hear about it and dismiss it because it is a Harley Davidson. So uh, I think they would have been better suited to spend a little more time grabbing those people while they might have had them for two seconds. And uh, again, shouting it that uh, this is the best bike for uh, your dollar. Uh, so that is my take on the Pan America. I love it. I want to ride one. If I could buy one, I probably would. Um, I have some other things I want to do with this channel. So not sure that I'm going to spend 20 grand on a, a an adventure bike. It's not impossible that it doesn't find its way on the channel at some point, um, but not sure what I'm going to do at this point. So with that being said, that is my take on the Harley Davidson Pan America. I'm excited to see the bike. I think it's great. I wish Harley would celebrate it a little bit more and uh, really drive the point home that they've done something absolutely incredible, um, not just kind of catching up with everybody else, um, but if not catching up, also surpassing. So that's my take. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to support the channel. I will see you guys next time.